week again. And as you will see my presentation, I will catch uh, some ideas that uh, Alicia has already presented, which is, uh, which is the isomorphism between, um, between bodies and bottles. Yeah, that's why my presentation is entitled Venetian Bottle Shaped Representation, the Iconography and Symbolism. In the Phoenician art repertoire, the most famous um, isomorphism between uh, uh, bodies and bottles is the so-called uh, bottle idol. And the bottle uh, idol, we can find it in two supports, whether in jewelry or uh, spine. And, uh, well, I, it's, um, it's, a, it's a very well-known um, motive and several studies have devoted to interpret uh, this, uh, <coughs> this, um, this symbol. But um, I would like to add another uh, material with the, the same idea of connecting people and oh, persons and bottles, which are these terracotta figures. Although they are not labeled as bottle idols, because bottle idols are clearly uh, related to stili and jewelry, I, I will develop in this presentation how these uh, terracotta figurines um, revolve around, around the same idea of um, bodies and human bodies and, and bottles. And well, just uh, uh, somewhere in my research, I am now I'm very I'm focusing always in, in looking at, at the shape of uh, bottles. And whenever I see these ones, I, I, I connect it with, uh, with the Phoenician and Punic ones. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, transforming the act of drinking in, some, in a practice more sensual and very eye-catching, no? for marketing reasons, obviously, for, the, for children. But even now, you can see the connection between these two issues, no? bottles and humans. So, but coming back to the, to the Phoenician, just because some of you are not very well familiarized uh, with, uh, with the Phoenician diaspora and the Punic uh, presence, just I show you a map that my colleagues that are here pre uh, preparing for a publication, uh, showing the uh, trade diaspora from that, that some cities from the present day Syria, Lebanon, uh, Israel began throughout the Mediterranean and the Atlantic around the 9th century BC. Okay? They began, uh, they settled uh, different areas, uh, always on the coast, sometimes creating uh, colonies from scratch, sometimes interacting more, um, more, um, more intensively, more intensively with the local population. Here I have shown you the the materials I'm going to present to you today. Every chart materials from the Central Mediterranean, from Carthage, and um, Phoenician colony in Western Sicily, and Western Sicily, which is Moxia and several materials from colonies from Sardinia, eh? uh, South uh, Sardinia. <coughs> but uh, first, uh, first of all, I want to uh, explain you what we know about the Phoenician art, because um, uh, the people who, who's, who is working with Phoenician material culture and Phoenician culture, um, perhaps the artists, the artworks are not very well known or are not well studied in them. And it is um, it's curious to know that the, uh, the first materials labeled as Phoenician art uh, weren't found in the Levant, neither from the colonies. And they are these famous Phoenician metal bowls, and they were found at the, uh, the mid 19th century. Mm -hmm. In in Cerveteri, Etruscan Cerveteri, in Minru and Cyprus. So what we call proper Phoenician art has been never found in, in the Levant, eh, but in other uh, areas. These are the, uh, the Phoenician uh, metal bowls, eh, all um, made with different bottle, uh, metals, and the decoration is always inside the metal, uh, inside the bowl, eh, not outside. And as you can see in the slide, they have uh, an Egyptianizing look yeah, because um, now there's a current debate about if Phoenician art exists or not yeah, because uh, it, it drinks from uh, Greek and 
Mesopotamia and Egypt and uh, motives. So is there a proper Phoenician art? Uh, that's a current uh, debate. And uh, well, um, after this, this metal bones were preserved, uh, some other fragments were located in other areas of the Mediterranean and always um, related to Phoenician artisans. Why do we know that? Because one of them had an inscription, a Phoenician inscription, and that's the main idea, and that's the main argument to relate it with uh, Phoenician. And as you can see here, this is a quote of uh, the ancient test testament that precisely explains how the, um, the, canon, uh, the people from Tired of Phoenician people are well known uh, for being good artisans and they are very, very appreciated for their luxury uh, works of art. Yeah. And indeed, the second, um, uh, the second important uh, material clearly related to Phoenician art are the ivories. Yeah, the Phoenician ivories, but they are mostly found as in Mesopotamia as well. Okay. So, um, what we will find in the Phoenician settlements, whether in the Levant or in the colonies, okay, we found a wide range of what we can label as art works. <coughs> the numerous ones are um, terracotta figurines with different uh, techniques, mold made, handmade. Okay, these are Mold made, handmade, very simple, and um, uh, wheel made as well. Mm -hmm. they are, um, it is interesting because the, the terracotta figurines are all um, massively representing uh, women. Okay? The, the number of masculine figurines is very, uh, it's very low. We have also these um, fantastic terracotta masks okay, with this. Um, Sardonic smile, and we, we love it. And um, these apotropic eyes, which are small uh, pendants, glaze made of, of glaze. Yeah, and they, they have an uh, apotropic symbolism, and they were used as, as, <coughs> as amulets okay, for protective treatments. And I have to put it here uh, also. <coughs> Typical eh, Phoenician and Punic material, which are the ostrich eggshells. Eh? Ostrich eggshells were used well as containers. Eh? You can see here they cut the top eh? and they painted it, and they were used as proper containers. Or also they cut it in small pieces and painted them uh, uh, with faces, representing uh, human faces. Eh? And most of them, eh, um, they are found from funerary. <coughs> Other artworks which are not as abundant as the previous one are um, statues, a big uh, statues made out of uh, stone mostly. Some of them are made from uh, of marble, but this is not quite common. And this is a representation of Bess, yeah? a divinity that um, Alicia had already shown you, and also very rarely, and from later chronologies, eh, from late Punic chronologies, we have uh, mural paintings eh, from funerary chambers, eh, always using uh, red pigments, eh, massively. So at, as I had already told you, the bottle idol is uh, one, uh, one of the most famous iconographies. Eh? And uh, there are two supports what this uh, motif is represented. On the one hand, we have the pendants, okay, always uh, made out of gold, and found in tombs. Mm -hmm. They are dated between the 7th and the 6th century BC in the area exclusively from uh, Carthage, uh, Sardinia, and Sicily. And it's um, reading the, the documentation to prepare this uh, session. It was funny because um, the, the researchers that wrote, that wrote about it assumed directly that these were uh, pendants located in tombs of women in relation to what we said. But there's absolutely nothing. Uh, there are no historical analyses under two, so it's just an assumption that decoration and all 
the feminine issue, no? So mm, that's something we have to uh, delay. Mm? And the other support where the bottle icon is represented is on the stele from the top heads. And the top heads are uh, singing English. <laughs> 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 Toughest for the ones who you are, uh, you are not familiarized with. It's that uh, controversial topic in French and Finnish academia because there's this debate about it. Is this a cemetery or is that uh, simply a, a, a sacred place where people, um, the devotees, attended to the shrine uh, to, to thank God for. for for several and um, <coughs> in the toughest, what we found in terms of material culture is arms containing the ashes, either of newborns or animals, and sometimes they are mixed, the ashes from animals and newborns. And some of these, uh, of these um, uh, arms were surmounted by this stele uh, represented with the bottle idol. Hmm. But I show you some. Uh, the bottle idol is a kind of sacred element because sometimes it's a container with the crescent and the disc, and this is um, a representation very typical from, uh, from the Phoenician. Or, uh, also accompanied with caduceus or incense burners, no? so um, it's a central element eh, in the in the in the, in the stele. <coughs> Interestingly, and that goes to my main argument in, at the in later chronologies, the bottle idol uh, became anthropomorphized. Eh? You can see here how they added breasts or faces and uh, reinforced the connection between these terracotta figurines made out uh, that resembles a bottle and this symbol. <coughs> so these are the bottle shaped figurines that I really connect with. The they have the same uh, idea of the bottle idol. And they are made out of, uh, they are a uh, wheel made, resembling uh, the form of, uh, of a bottle, mm -hmm. but um, they are not proper bottles because, as you can see here, the top is open and the base is open. So they are not used as bottles, although they are made, uh, they are um, performed, uh, uh, use the technique uh, of, a, of a bottle. Indeed, the, you can see the resemblance eh, between the, the, the figurines and the, and the bottles. And choosing, uh, choosing this, um, this shape um, has consequences in terms of representing the body. One of the consequences is that the face, eh, the face is has the neck of the jack, eh, the neck of, of the bottle, and in, to transform them to transform the, the, the jack of the, of the bottle, what the artisans did was simply to, uh, to add uh, ears or to, uh, um, to, 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 hold, to make the, the eyes and also to cover uh, the, 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 open, the opening of the jack. And that's why the, the, the faces have this strange look. Eh? <coughs> Another way of make, transforming the, the, ja, the next uh, jack into faces are to put a clay addition yeah, on, the, on the top of the bottle and uh, make the, 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 and transform it into a face. So um, I will. So I would like to, um, my, my main concern about this connection between people and bottles um, it's about the way that Phoenician and Punic people understood their own bodies. Hmm? I, I, I don't think this an, uh, an stylistical and technical analysis is worthwhile, but also there is something else no? in, in, try, in reproducing human body in a shape of a, if of a bottle. So uh, my, con my idea is that uh, the connection between bodies and bottles is in relation to the the idea of bodies as fluid containers. And indeed, the Pistacotas emphasize all the human uh, orifices where liquids eh, or are uh, expelled. 
breast and genitalia and also mouth. <coughs> so my idea here is that bodies are conceived as elements where fluids circulate. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting to put it in context because these figurines and the bottle idols are precisely found in tofets. Okay? Tofets, as uh, you can see here, I label them as emotion, emotionally charged places where people went there to perform a ritual in connection to the family household eh, or to, to their ancestors. So one way to connect um, the living with the dead or with the, with the divinities or with the non-born uh, members of the family is through precisely the, um, the, um, the, <laughs> the transmission of fluids, eh? corporal or alcoholic or liquids. And that's all. <laughs>